Hi, hello. Today we'll talk another coding pattern, sliding window. What will be our flow? First, we'll talk about some example. Later, we will discuss what is sliding window and then how to identify that. Then types of sliding window. And at the end, I will talk about the template. I will be using Scala and I will implement functional programming on using a template and solve these questions. These questions are mostly all of them from lead code. Here I have mentioned their uh, lead code ID. Here is a description you can find and you can practice them too. So let's come with some example. So how the question will come? They will give us some array or some string. Array or some string. And they would be, let's suppose, take an example like this, like find a subarray of maximum sum of size, suppose k. So question will be something like that. And if we will take some example, it will be something, let's suppose we take this example and we have to find subarray of maximum sum of size, suppose k equal to four. How we will do that? If we will go with a brute force solution, how we will implement, we will take simply some for loop. That for loop is going to iterate on all these elements. And we will use another for loop where it will go up to the size of four, which is a subarray. So first, what is subarray? So for the subarray, it means contiguous elements. It is not meant that, let's suppose we have an array. So it means contiguous element. We are talking about all these, which are continuous, which are connected. It doesn't mean that one element is here and the other one is here, unconnected, no. Subarray means that is connected, contiguous element. So what will happen in this part, in the brute force approach, simply what we will do, we will iterate in all elements, and then we will make the size of a window, that size of K. We will iterate once we will get the size of K, we will add all of them, and we will get our first possible candidate. In this way, we will iterate. So let's suppose if we talk about uh, with the example, so how we will do that, we will take, we will come up to here. That will be our first window. We'll found, uh, found a sum. That sum is equal to seven. That's a possible candidate. Next, we will move this window further. Now we will get sum again, we will get the possible candidate will be 10. We will move this window further. Now the candidate will be 12. Okay. Now we will move window again. And this inner loop, that one will count again all the sum of these elements. And we will get 13. And out of all those possible candidate, we will calculate what is max. And we will found that 13 is max. So that will be our answer. Now, if you look at this solution, so we iterate all the elements, so it means we are iterating n times. And this window is calculating sum of all the numbers like here, one plus six plus four plus two. So we are iterating k times. So the complexity of this brute force solution will come up with big of n and k. Can we make it better? Yes. Using sliding window, we can make it better. Let's see what's sliding window. So in sliding window, it is advanced two pointer where we keep those two pointer either of the fixed size or we, we vary them. So it is a variable size window. So we will take the previous example, three, two. Now we will create the window of size K. K here is equal to four. We will make that window. Now in the first iteration, we, will, we, we found the size of window. We will calculate the sum, which is a possible candidate that will be seven. Now 
we will move the window next. As we will move forward, we can see that we, we can reuse the calculation we have already done. We have already calculated the sum of these three numbers, 2, 1, 1. So what we can do here, we can just minus this number and we can add that number. So in the first iteration, whatever sum we have, we can just minus that sum minus nums from left and we can add nums the right. So we can add the new number, which is right, and we can minus the previous number. We found a new possible candidate. We will get this and that will be 10. Now we will move our window further. It will move forward. Now again, what we will do, we will skip, we will minus that previous number and we will add the new one. And again, we will find our next possible candidate, which will be 12. Now we will move the window again. In that case, we found another, we will just exclude the previous one and add the new one. We will exclude this and we will add the new one. Again, we will find our new possible candidate, which is 13. And out of all those possible candidate, we can find the max. For sure, with each iteration, we can keep on calculating, which is max, the current max, and we will find 13. That will be our answer. In that case, what we have done, what brute force approach was repeating something. We just excluded that. So we get rid of repetition. We get rid of recalculating. We are not going to recalculate. So what we are doing, we are just getting the benefit of previous recalculation and we are going to find our answer. In that case, this is going to run only n time. And with each new iteration, we are just excluding this and we are adding new one. So that complexity will be big of n. Now, how we will identify sliding window. So let's talk about its identification. So the first thing we can see that there will be some array or some string will be given. That will be the first thing. Plus, they would be expecting some subarray or some substring and they or they, they will provide some condition and that condition could be anything like that could be max that could be largest that could be minimum uh, that could be smaller than or that could be non-repeating so any condition could be there so that's the second third thing and the plus they will provide some window size so window size will be given or that will be required we will talk about that what is given and required but yeah there will be some window size which will be discussed most importantly some question will look like that that could be solved with sliding window but they are not so sliding window will apply only on those questions where elements of this array or substring are monotonically increasing so that's the condition too and that what what does it mean it means whatever the condition is being asked that condition by accepting the new element let's suppose in this if i will talk about in this array this uh, let's let's make this one in this array with with each iteration of this window the condition of getting max is monotonically increasing if we exclude it decrease if we add it increase so so uh, if we have some minus or negative numbers we can't apply sliding window now let's talk about types of sliding window so we have two types of sliding window fixed and variable so what is fixed size sliding window the example we discussed before in that what happens we get some array and we have to find a subarray with maximum sum of size k so six four two so given in question would be window size in the previous example that was k equal to four 
and there will be some condition which will be given. In the previous example, that was maximum of subarray. And required would be either the count of those elements or like the possible candidate which was satisfying condition. That could be max, that could be min or whatever. So in fixed size of sliding window, once we get uh, the size of sliding window, with each iteration, we have the new possible candidate. We move further, we get the new possible candidate. We move further, we found the new possible candidate. We move further, we found the new possible candidate. So what we have to do, we first have to make a fixed size, fixed size of sliding window. And then with each iteration, with each iteration, we get a new possible candidate. So what's variable size sliding window? Let's talk about with an example. Suppose they were asking there is a string and we have to find maximum size substring. So we have to find maximum substring with non-repeating characters. Now, what happens in this case? So we can see that first condition they were asking about substring, which will be for sure contiguous characters. And they were providing some, they were asking for condition. That condition is non-repeating characters. And in the given, they will provide no window size. This is what we have to find. So maximum substring is actually telling us find the window. So in variable size sliding window with each iteration, we are not going to find the possible candidate. We won't find that. We have to find the possible candidate on different size of window. So considering the same example here, let's take an example. So I take, let's suppose A. In this example, what we will do, we will take our left pointer. So the left pointer will start from here. Now we will take another right pointer and that right pointer, right pointer will say, okay, I'm here. In the first, we will find our first possible candidate where non-repeating character and the size is one. That's the first thing. Next, what we will do, we will take our right pointer next. Now we found two non-repeating characters. Oh, our possible candidate is of size two. Now we will move our right pointer again. So the, the size of window is changing. Now we found repeating character. Oh, we have to shrink. We have to collapse. We have to shorten our sliding window. So we will, we will move this further. Now we have two again. Now we will move the right point again. Yeah, we found a new possible candidate where non-repeating character and the size is three. Again, we will move forward we found another repeating character. In that case, this pointer will move to step here. And now we keep on moving our right, right, and the maximum size, what we will get is four. So this is a non, this is a sl sliding window with variable size. That's our window. Initially it was of size one, then we found the size of two. So. In that case, in this variable size sliding window, the size of window change with condition and we have to find whatever max, minimum or something. So we have two type of fixed and variable size sliding window. Now let's talk about the template. Its template is pretty simple. It's not very difficult. In the template, what we will do, we have, let's suppose string, or we have, let's suppose, an array. So let's suppose we have nums or string. Then what we will do, we will just make a zip with index most of the time. And then mostly we will fold left. And here we will provide, let's suppose, our left pointer. We will talk about, let's suppose, max or something. There will be some possibly variable to proceed the calculation. 
and there could be some memo also something like that so there that could be one or two or something we have to we will see problem by problem they will change and then we will go with the case here we have all of them and there will be our num and that will be the right pointer here so here will be our all calculation that's simple that's a pretty simple template for sliding window so we will we will keep on moving here in that sliding window we will fold them with the required size possibly that will be right minus left will be the window size right minus left will be equal to k that will be our window size but we will see how we will solve the question but most of the time the template will be exactly the same so what we have discuss till now we have talked about an example for sliding window we talk about what is sliding window we know that how to identify we know what are the types of sliding window and we look at the template in the next videos hopefully we will talk about the questions we will solve them by applying the coding template thanks